Good morning, folks. Last night, the sun woke back up with an M2.3 solar flare from the incoming southern sunspot group. Although only a moderately energetic eruption, it was spectacular to watch. It was impulsive, but still likely produced ejecta. We happened to catch it mid-explosion and were able to note the minor radio blackout produced by the X-ray energy. The flare came from the only place it could have come from, the interacting magnetics on the southern incoming spots. The area of mixing extends from the center of the group to the southern tip of the lead positive umbra where a tiny negative spot is found. I'd love to be able to tell you if the CME is earth directed, but as of 5 a.m. Eastern, both Lasco cameras had another 8 hour gap missing data. I see even Dr. Phillips noticed the lack of data this time. By the way, that's Venus coming in up there. The solar wind is still rather steady, but tipped south and with some moderate density. This is producing continued geomagnetic instability, and while the solar sector boundary crossing likely played a role, it's also possible that one or two of those small plasma filament eruptions from the last couple of days has finally made it to Earth, contributing to the geomagnetic disruption. Other than that, we've got the big corona hole Earth facing, but it has lost significant power in the last 48 hours with the departing opening up north taking it back. We've got those thin dark plasma filaments coming in above the flaring spots and Earth Earth quickly eclipsing the SDO for one of the last times this season. It's looking like we may skirt this quake watch with unusual shaking only, like the Aruba and Antarctic rumbles from the last 48 hours. Chile and Central America with little upticks last night and it looks like Iceland is no longer alone in rumbling the North Atlantic. This is the first of two animations linked for you below the video. This is the view from the Mars rover as October 18th turns to October 19th and Comet Siding Spring passes quite close to the planet. Also linked below will be our Siding Spring playlist which goes into detail about what's going to happen. On the 19th, the comet will swing by quickly and with even a small telescope you will be able to look at the red planet around sunset and see the comet passing by. This was sent to us from the makers of Solar System Scope, and we thank them for again sending us their latest visualization. Here's the second one, from NASA. And folks, this is not Earth. This is what they think Mars used to look like. The video is accompanied by a good article and description of the MAVEN mission objectives monitoring the upper atmosphere of Mars. New Typhoon Candidate is luckily slated to head north instead of heading for the Philippines again. Across the Pacific, we expect the low south of Mexico to be named very soon. That low off the northwest coast will continue to pour down rain as well. This was the scene at the main U.S. convergence in Florida yesterday. More than seven inches of rain fell in one hour. Shifting a bit, we see that convergence still at the U.S. east coast with the northern flow remaining in the central states. Flood watch remains in the east while storms and rain can be expected from Texas all the way up across the Canadian border. We've got three lows we're eyeing in Europe. The western one is minor and a little hard to see. Also a convergence just southeast of the UK. Those four areas have their thunderstorm warnings tonight. One low in southeastern Australia and two blocking highs straddling it, clearing the clouds, leaving that low as the lone watch down there. We've got some other weather watches around the world and some shots of our start to close at 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time, 4.15 a.m. Mountain Time. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.